we'll start off with some news. And uh, I want to start off with uh, MPW2 news. So there's been quite a lot of work going on on the MPW2 bring up. And if you're interested to find out more about that, uh, then you should check out the MPW2 Silicon channel on the Slack. And in particular, one thing I'd like to draw attention to is um, uh, Dirk's team taped out an embedded FPGA fabric on MPW1 and 2. I did an interview with them about a year ago, and Myrtle has successfully brought that FPGA fabric up and has programmed a simple blinky on there. So it's really great to see that coming alive. And there's other people in various stages of progress on MPW2. So uh, there's some good progress going on there. Uh, we've had quite a few questions about where we're at with uh, the different shuttles. Um, so I asked uh, Jeff to give me an update and um, MPW3 is ready to ship. So that's good news. What we're waiting on is feedback from MPW2 so that we know if we're gonna need to change any of the PCB design or any of the software. So we're getting, we're like get, seeing how people are getting on with the MPW2 bring up, and then we'll be sending out the MPW3. Um, MPW4 and MPW5 are in fabrication and they're on hold waiting for feedback from MPW2 as well. So just in case we discover anything awful that needs to be fixed, that is fixable, uh, that can be fixed. Um, if you've got questions about any of this stuff, then feel free to um, drop them in. I'm getting some people saying, uh, hi, hello, chat is disabled, by the way, only Q&A enabled, just for your info. Thanks, Sylvan. Good to see you here, and good to see Powell as well, and probably there's lots of other people I know here, so welcome. Um, next shuttles. So Chip Ignite 2304C is taping out April the 3rd, and that's a WLCSP package, so that's these uh, little... Um, uh, kind of difficult to solder BGA bumped devices. Every other one is QFN with uh, less devices. And we're waiting on confirmation about MPW9, uh, the Google eFabulous open source shuttle. So uh, that is going to be uh, confirmed soon. All right, some questions. Yes, we are, we are recording this and it's going to be um, published on uh, YouTube later, MPW628. Uh, no, I don't have any news about them. And um, let's continue. So um, just to say a little bit about this webinar. So this is going to focus on schematic capture and simulation of an analog design. Um, and then the next webinar is going to be taking the results of what we have today and doing uh, the layout. So doing the actual drawing of the uh, MOSFETs and the other components and building it up into... Uh, what we could tape out. And then the one after that probably will look at hack actually taking that and taping it out maybe on MPW9, that'd be good. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to welcome Stefan onto the stage. So Stefan, if you want to unmute and turn on your, your camera. Here I am. Here you Hi, are. Everyone. Hello, everyone. <laughs> um, wave to uh, Stefan. I think there's... um. I heard that in Zoom, the new Zoom, there's um, like reactions. You can like do thumbs up and stuff like that. So if you want to see if that works, uh, I don't know. Oh, there we go. People are raising hands. So that's saying hello. <laughs> it's good to get that participation. And uh, I've also prepared a couple of polls. So I'm going to launch a poll now because we want to find out a little bit about you. Um, so I'll just uh, set that poll going there. Um, and while we're asking you to fill in that, we'll ask uh, Stefan how how you're doing. How are you doing, Stefan? I'm fine. Thank yeah. So um, tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you get into the business here? Well, I have been, uh, I am now 56 years old. I have been 26 years in the VLSI industry. First in ST Microelectronics in Italy. I live in Italy, by the way. Then uh, for a Micron co company, and uh, in between was a short uh, interval at Intel because uh, there were some mergers and uh, stuff like that. And mostly I've been involved in um, mixed signal design because I was specifically into the um, non-volatile memory business units. 
so flash memories nor NAND flashes and and later uh, in Micron also emerging technologies still mostly non-volatile memories a little bit of DRAM also so I have in my 20, 26 year journey I have covered a, a wide range of different kind of memories from uh, um, legacy legacy ones to emerging technologies some technologies never ca came to market also so a lot of wider ranges and uh, as a as a engineer design engineer i've been using uh, for many years uh, mostly cadence tools because it's almost quite all universally an industry standard for design in the vs lsi in the companies and um, for for some reasons i was not very happy while it must be pointed that uh, cadence is a very powerful tool extremely complex extremely wide uh, spectrum it covers almost everything from uh, schematic down to tape out but for the schematic part i was not very happy with uh, cadence it's in my opinion it's just my opinion this it's a bit over engineered it's very very big extremely big and in all my many years working as a design engineer i have I think I have used 10% uh, of the features of the program, uh, but this 10% is not done very well. So this is the reason I try to to implement through the years. As it was a joke in the beginning, just a side project, a homework work, a, a, a schematic editor, which for sure is much uh, simpler than Cadence and any other tool on the in, in the industry. But uh, it tries to do the very few things uh, much, much better and specifically much, much faster. I want the program to be very fast. Uh, Cadence took all, always uh, 10, 15 seconds to extract a netlist, even for a five transistor circuit, because to all the boilerplate, the skill code, the scripting languages in between, so many things in between uh, made the whole thing extremely slow, especially for small. Uh, circuits where you want to have a very quick loop you want to see a change simulate view the results change simulate view the result if you yeah. have to wait 15 <clears throat> seconds every time it's taking a, a lot of time away so yeah. this was we one of the reasons for x scheme uh, and it is extremely fast and a normal circuit will net list in milliseconds not in 15 seconds so this is the reasons i am now retired because i accepted the a very nice option from the company after 26 years i was a bit bored uh, doing all the same work uh, for so many years so designing memories so in the last uh, three years i have much more time especially my life quality has improved a lot and i have much more time free to develop a uh, scheme and uh, yeah and give a more support in the open source uh, industry, yeah great in the open source movement i i believe uh, I, I hope this uh, open source set of tools from uh, from design to tape out will improve over the time over time and uh, yeah X scheme is a small the, the small part for the schematic uh, I think for analog design it's still a useful tool in uh, yeah. at the present yeah and we've seen it used a lot in the mix signal and analog tape outs on the open source shuttles so yeah. um, what we've got ready for you all today is a series of um, short videos that Stefan's put together ahead of time, and we're going to play them one after the other. Um, and in between each video, we're going to have like a slot for live Q&A. So as the videos are playing, if you have any questions, then drop them into the Q&A box. And then uh, in between the spaces of the videos, we'll do a live Q&A. Um, so... Having said that, I'm going to uh, start with the first video. Okay, for the design, we now start X scheme and we open an empty page and we start inserting elements. Our goal today is to design a comparator and this comparator must detect a differential signal as low as one millivolt. And as you probably know, one millivolt is a very small quantity and uh, normal statistical variations prevent um, a comparator to detect such a small signal unless you do some specific 
compensation, auto zeroing, auto -zeroing uh, technique or, or similar. Anyway, this is our requirement. We must operate at 1.8 volt at uh, extended temperature range and we and this is very important, we must simulate with device mismatch because mismatch is the killer uh, the killer thing in this kind of design because we need to detect one millivolt. And also the circuit must be self-calibrating, so no external trimming, no testing, uh, no trimming has been is to be done. Simply that the device does some calibration initially and then uh, senses the signal and for this tutorial we require very slow operation so we are not pushing like here we are not pushing a fast operation so we keep one mi microsecond calibration one microsecond sensing and also the requirement for the current is somewhat below 50 microamps okay this is our design design goal okay we can start inserting some components so if you press the insert key or shift insert you can start inserting elements first of all the devices directory in X scheme is the, the the library with the the standard components like voltage sources uh, uh, net labels pins all the stuff that are which is process independent okay First of all, I will insert a title because I like a title in my designs, like this. Okay, and uh, I need to add uh, s some pins. So we go down here and we start inserting some input pin, I pin here, this one. And. Uh, for sure, this is a. I will start uh, designing an operational amplifier, a transconductance amplifier. So there is a, a plus signal, a positive. Let's do it uh, uppercase, which is more better readable. Then you can press the C key to copy and create another pin, and we name this minus. Okay. These are the two differential inputs of the operational amplifier. Then we we'll have also, of course, we we'll have VCC supply. I am also using the, the C key to copy. Okay, and VSS. Okay, these are the two supplies. And let's say we also have an ena enable bar. active low this is an enable signal so if enable is high the whole circuit is switched off no current consumption and as will become short uh, it will become uh, clear later we have an ad adjust pin this is a pin which is used to adjust the, the offset of the um, operational amplifier this will be clear uh, later on and also there is an output pin, so O pin output, this one, and this is the output we call the output of if out. Okay, this is the output of so this is the interface to our of our comparator. Next we start putting some uh, components. So we now we go into this the process specific library. Uh, so sky 130 sky 130 fdpr this is the location of all the components so we go by inserting a pfet transistor 1.8 volt this one this one here and then we need another couple of pfets we are our new for the differential pair i i will use a, a, a low threshold lvt this one so one here and now i copy this one with the c key and by shift f i flip horizontally the, the transistor so i can put put another here 
Okay. And next I need the two and channel transistor. I will be using a LVT as well for the current loads. Let's see. And that 1.8 LVT, this one. So we put one here, copy, shift F to flip, and one other here. Okay, and I wire up with the W key, I add wires. If you press this space bar, you can change the orientation like this. Press W again, and you start another segment, and you are done. Okay, this one. These are connected as diodes, like this. I can also, by dragging the mouse, I can copy, and by pressing the Shift key, I can add some segments. I can copy this whole thing, Shift F to flip, and here we go. Okay, next, ground connection. Okay, I want to put a net label here, so I go again into the devices directory here and set look for lab, label pin, label pin here. And I call this VSS. Okay. And uh, the upper part here is connected to VCC. So I can take this one, copy, C key, here, press the Q key to edit the attributes and change the name, VCC. Okay, here we go. This will be the minus input, so wire and copy. You see, by double clicking, you can edit the attributes, or if you select and press the Q key, you can do the same. So, double click is faster. And also, you can close the dialog box by clicking outside into the drawing area, like this. This is very useful for fast uh, editing. You select these two elements, copy, shift F, and here you go. And this is the plus input click outside okay and this one is the enable signal so copy wire here and enable N so this is the input stage next we need to edit the the dimensions so uh, I forgot also to wire to wire the the substrates okay I, I can Copy, Shift F, set this one to VSS, select these two elements. You can select multiple elements by pressing, clicking on one, press the Shift key, click on the second, copy, C key, Shift F, flip, copy, and, and place. Okay. You can also do this. Uh, you can do this, select these two, copy again and put here. So you are wiring the, you can use the mouse wheel to scroll up and down to zoom in and out. And this will be VCC. VCC, copy, flip, and here we go. I think all the transistors are now wired up correctly. We need to side, oh, so I'm missing a, another one here. Oops, copy, here we go. I now need to set the dimensions. So since these transistors are uh, identical, I can select one, press the shift key, select the other, and press now the Q key and set the W to two and the length to four. This is analog. Uh, is an analog device, so we need to use a large ge geometric uh, 
like dimensions to reduce mismatch effects okay you s oh sorry when you do this and select and change the dimensions like this two and four i forgot to mention select this one this will ensure only these two attributes will be updated in the two select in the two selected symbols nothing else even if different or identical doesn't matter will not be changed it's always good if you select multiple elements to set this attribute here this uh, checkbox here okay two by four and the uh, input stage oops let's clear this one okay the input stage needs to be quite big so we set a w of eight and the length of two here we go and uh, the switch transistor here needs to be very conductive so we keep the minimum length uh, sorry no this is a, a current a current bias bias so we need to set a very long uh, length so it sets l to 8 for example and uh, w to 2 okay i think we are all set so this is the input stage i will then go on with the, the output stage uh, and uh, i add then some uh, calibration okay so that's the first part the first installation done and we're going to just answer some of these still open questions so stefan and i have both been answering in the uh, q a panel um we'll stay focused on the uh, questions that are related to x scheme <clears throat> so um Let's start off with, I think, something that a lot of people are interested in is how do you know what the length and the width to use when you're, um, when you're, when you're setting that in the, in the spice box? Stefan. You, know, you need to know the technology you are working on. Usually, the most important thing is the smallest feature length of the, of the process. This is dependent on the process. For example, Sky 130 has a minimum length of one of 150 nanometer this is not one 130 as was stated in the process name because the sky 130 it's 150 there i don't know if it is a, some marketing or simply the minimum absolute minimum can be 130 but normal design requires one 150 so the minimum length is set by the the process you can of course use bigger length longer length and, uh, and uh, is for analog you usually need to use longer lengths because you have uh, more stable devices more predictable uh, behavior and so on and for the width uh, it, it goes by experience so uh, if you have, are an experienced designer designer you know at uh, very roughly you, you know what size you need for your specific uh, circuit keeping in, in, in mind the, the current consumption, the power requirements of the, of the devices and so on. So there, there is no uh, automatic, uh, at least uh, in analog or mixed, mixed signal design, there is no uh, for, uh, automatic uh, sizing. You, you start with uh, your raw gas, you put a circuit, you simulate, and you can then optimize. There are also automatic optimizing tools which uh, run, run, do a number of runs on the circuit and uh, resize the circuit according to some uh, goal function or cost function to optimize the circuit. These are all things that can be done also with open source tools. For example, in NGSpice, you can do a loop, you can do multiple simulation, measure some results, and optimize your circuit based on the results. This can be okay. done. Thanks, Stefan. Um, moving on to another question. Um, uh, I There's one here I'd like to answer. Um, do we need, in X scheme, do we need additional libraries uh, for these components or is everything built in? Okay, X scheme by itself, X scheme can be used also as a standalone uh, program. By itself, XKIM comes with just, uh, there is one 
process independent library it's called devices this library comes travels with the scheme comes with the scheme and contains all the basic primitives that are available in every design so i mean uh, labels input output pins um basic uh, voltage sources uh, control sources ideal components everything that is not bound to a specific process is available in xkeem even if you install xkeem alone in addition to this to to do a, a design with xkeem on a specific process you have to use a process specific library for uh, for uh, for sky 130 shown in the previous video it was that uh, sky 130 fdpr library it is a library that contains all the specific xkeem primitives so mos transistors um resistors uh, varactors capacitors all silicon devices are in this library because this library is specific to a process so if you use the gf 180 uh, mcu process you will use another library which is specific to the to the different process so at the very least you need uh, this scheme uh, own library for symbols pins and stuff like that and a process uh, library and most mostly then you have also a standard cell library uh, standard cell contains logic gates almost every process provides a standard logic library this is not very much used in uh, mixed or analog designs but in some cases you want a single flop or latch or NAND gate in your design you just pick one of these uh, gates from the standard uh, standard library standard cell library and you put the component in the schematic so at the very least you have three libraries okay Device in yeah okay yeah because we, we got to um we've got to keep this show on the road <laughs> yeah. um so uh i just want to have one more quick uh question and we'll try to answer the other questions as the next video is playing um one from um eric smith was is there an electrical rule checker for things like unconnected pins or one pin nets etc yeah, uh, Xkeem has a, a window. You can bring up the window. It's uh, in the view show ERC. It's an ele electrical rule checker. So if you have a short, if you have a misconnected uh, pin, or uh, for example, if you have uh, two overlapped identical devices in a schematic, which is a very situation you usually cannot see, all these things are, are flagged into this window. And mm -hmm. if it is a very, uh, if it is an error, the, the window will pop up immediately. If it is just a warning, you have to specifically, if you want to see the warning, you have to open the the the, the window yourself. But yes, there is the, okay. the checker. Great. So let's move on to the uh, next video. And while we're watching that, uh, Stefan and I will do our best to answer all the remaining questions. So thanks for your questions and keep them coming. It's great to see so many. Okay. All nice. right. Let's go with the next one. Okay, I have added here the output stage. Basically, I am mirroring this current on the upper side and mirroring this current in the lower side. And this is the output stage. This is basically a OTA, transconductance amplifier, where the output is driven by the difference of the currents in the two branches of the differential amplifier. As you can see, all the inputs are used if you if you press the n key you will be doing a net list and if you bring up the erc window you see there is an open net meaning it, this net is not used but this will be added later on so we don't care about this now you can generate a symbol for this first of all save your your work so save as and we will saving into our test directory here and we will save this as uh, opamp just uh, opamp it's enough for us okay here we go and next make symbol from schematic yes we want to do and if you now open into our directory the symbol 
has been created automatically from our schematic. So we have a plus, minus. We can rearrange the, the symbol to look a bit better. For example, we can put all these input pins here. And we can move this here and the output, we can move the output in the center. We can remove this and make this look like this. Let's see. And we can move. Okay, not very nice, but it's enough for our purpose. All right, save. Okay, now we have created a schematic, a symbol, and now we go with a test bench. So in the test bench, press the insert key and press home, go into the test and insert the symbol we have just created. Okay. Then shift insert, we insert the title. We, the least recently used the symbols we have just added are available here. So we can add the title. One thing I didn't mention, if you want to move, you can press the middle, the middle button of your mouse and you can move your schematic. The mouse wheel will do the zoom and that's that's uh, easy to move around okay there is a, a wiring tool in x scheme if you select the component and press the shift h key you will be adding labels to all the pins automatically this is very useful if you want to create a test bench okay so we are now we are, and now we want to save this save as and we call this test bench op pump. Here we go. So we have created a, an op operation amplifier schematic, a symbol, and a test bench using the symbol. Okay. Next, we will be set, we will be setting up the simulation and uh, doing some more work on this. All right, so that's the next um, section, and uh, Stefan, let's try and get a few more of these um, questions answered. Let's scroll to the end here. Um, During the video, I tried to answer by chat some of the questions. Yes, yeah, we're getting through some, but there's there's loads. <laughs> We've got twenty six answered, and there's still twenty five open. Yeah. Um, is there is there any um, that you're seeing here that you particularly like to answer live? Um, how about um, how do we once you've got an X scheme netlist? How do we export that to a layout tool? Uh, in a custom design, analog design, usually there is no automatic layout generation. It, this is very different from what you do in digital design. The digital flow doesn't even use a schematic. You go straight from HDL description down to tape out, right? Mm -hmm. But for, for analog designs, at least the, the traditional analog design, you, you have write your circuit, you draw your circuit, you generate a netlist, you use the netlist for simulating the circuit. Then you need to, to place your circuit to draw your circuit on on the layout you can do this either very manually so you draw every single polygon on the layout or you use p cells p cells are parametric cells representing devices uh, you have on the schematic so you have a p cell for an n channel transistor you may have a p cell for the p channel transistor so you start placing all these components sizing the components uh, as they are in the schematic then you are wire the components together on the layout using metal one, metal two, metal three, poly, whatever. And when you are done with your layout, what you do is extract a netlist from the layout and then you compare the two. Because the, the, this is the LDS layout versus schematic. You check 
the layouts to be equivalent to your schematic. And this, if this happens, then your layout is correct and you can start, uh, yeah, validating okay. your circuit and taping out. Yeah, and that's going to be something that we're going to cover in a future webinar. Um, yeah. Okay, a uh, question from Harold Prettel. Hi, Harold. Um, Harold saying he doesn't have the sidebar with the latest used components on the insert dialog. Is that a compile option or a feature of the window manager? No, this is a feature of Xkeem, uh, somewhat recent. If you bring up the component uh, uh, dialog box with the insert key of the I key, you don't have the recent. But if you use shift insert or, sh or shift I key, then you get a permanent uh, a window which stays open in the in the in the program, and you can choose components from this window, and the window remains open. The, the recently used uh, will show on the left, uh, and so yeah, this is a, a quicker way to pay place if you need to to start a new schematic and you need to place many components in a single run. So you you bring up the the dialog box with Shift Insert key, and it will remain there. Great. Okay, one more question before we move on to the next bit. Um, someone's asking, why did you use label? And I think that's probably quite a key concept, isn't it? L label is, uh, so you, a label just, what does a label do? It's just mm -hmm. adding a name to a net. And my, I have a strong uh, suggestion when you draw a circuit, uh, try to add labels on all the important nets of your circuit, because if you don't do, Xkeem does a, has an auto naming feature like any uh, schematic editor, but the names will call the net one, net two, net three. So it's not very easy to find the net if you simulate your circuit. Always put meaningful names on, uh, on your circuit. So if you wire a net between two components, either connect this net to an input pin if it's an input pin, or if it does not go anywhere else, add the label, so the, the label component, it just adds a, no, a name to the net. So you can, uh, this name will preserved in the net list and you can easily recognize your net in the simulation. Great, thanks Stefan. Okay, so let's um, move on to the next video, number three. Okay, we are now missing uh, one feature in our differential amplifier, which is the compensation uh, circuit. I have uh, it already available in uh, another Xkeme window here. So we, I will simply copy this in our test circuit. If you have multiple, if you open another Xkeme instance somewhere, you can copy from one window to the other. Just press the C key and there you go. Okay, I've added this compensation network. How does this uh, work? Simply the adjust pin, press the K key to highlight the net, goes into this pseudo inverter here and will add or subtract some current from this branch. So I can add a positive or a negative current into this node and this can be used to cancel the input offset due to mismatch of the differential amplifier as we as we will see in a moment okay i did not mention some editing feature of xkeem for example if you press the control key and drag a rectangle in your circuit and then you press the move key you can stretch the circuit you can change the if you press again m you can enlarge you this can be very useful to create room for uh, adding more circuit inside the cir inside the circuit for example you can select this rectangle here by pressing the control key you you go into a stretch editing mode so do it again control key drag a rectangle select and if you press Ctrl and Shift, you can add some components. And if you press the M key, you can move. If you press the H key, you move. Uh, you are constrained to a horizontal move. If you press the V key, you are constrained to a vertical move. In this case, I press the H key so I can make 
the circuit a little bit larger, for example, like this. I can press Ctrl, drag a rectangle and move this a bit closer, like this. Here we go. So I can move this a little bit here to the right. Okay, this was one editing command I did not mention before. Okay, we have uh, our block is basically done. So I can go up and uh, again, how do we use this compensation network? I have already a sample here. We basically use this network here. So we copy into our circuit. And also we need to, from a start input, we need to create a, a start negated signal. So we insert and we start looking into our test directory here. There is a, a not. Let's see. This is an inverter. So we can use this one to generate the start end signal given the start. Here we go. So our test bench will have, we have to drive the start signal, the plus, the minus, and the enable signal and the supply voltages. Now, I, I, you, can, you can drive all these signals by inserting voltage sources. For example, if you go here and place a V source like this, you can set the value, the lower value to VSS, the upper value to VCC. And you can set the value, for example, 1.8 whatsoever. You can uh, add any expression here, for example, PWL with many values and so on. But this is probably taking too much time if you have a design uh, which is not trivial like uh, this. So I use another function which is available in Scheme. It's basically a stimuli edit, a spice stimuli editor, which is this one. I can start by a template. I set voltage to VCC. VCC will be a spice param expression. We will see it in a moment. We use a very simple. Uh, there is a help available with all the explanation of this language. It's basically a, a program that converts a stimuli description into a SPICE PWL uh, format. Since SPICE PWL is not very useful for complex uh, stimuli generation, we are using this uh, description here. And uh, I will add the text here and then explain what I'm doing, okay? Okay, now I think because, um, just to keep us on track, Stefan, I think, what do you think about just playing the, the next uh, video directly, the simulation setup video? We'll continue answering the questions. Okay, I have added the necessary text into this when dialog box, I can create some parameters, just numbers, and begin file sets the name of a translated spice file that this tool will generate when pressing the translate button. And this is a file that needs to be included into a spice uh, simulation. We'll see how we'll use this later. So I set VSS to 0, VCC to 1. 1 is a logical one and is set to VCC. And VCC is a spice parameter, so it will be at the end 1.8 volt. But we will keep this as a parameter because we will want to use variation as well as uh, for the, all the other parameters. Okay, so we set VCC 
to 1. We set enable to 1 initially, so the circuit is disabled. We set plus and minus to V common, v common which is 0.6 volts, and so on. We set start 0. Then we move on 100 nanoseconds, because the format is nanos here. So we move forward 100 nanoseconds, and then we set enable N to 0, which means switch on the circuit. And we wait for some equalization time, we set start to 1. The start signal is used uh, here. The first step where start is 0 will short the output. Sorry, I will keep this negated because later on we also adding uh, an inverting buffer here. So, so we short the output of the differential amplifier to the adjust pin. So we while the plus and minus are both at the same at the very same voltage because they are identical here so we use the initial step to cancel out the offset of the differential amplifier okay and later on here we add v delta to the minus input v delta is a very small quantity is one millivolt so we offset one millivolt at the input and we want to see the output amplifying the input differential signal. Okay? So we set a signal at the input, we wait for the evaluation time, we set minus one here to compensate this uh, one uh, increment in simulation, so we, we are keep our time very aligned, uh, a multiple 100 nanosecond boundary, so it's very nice to see in the graph. Okay, when we reset the input to differential to zero, we start over again with equalization and then we do a, an, another sensing with a positive value, so lower negative delta to the input differential. Okay, translate, and that's what we want to do now. Okay, what would else do we need? We need to add. We are in the in the top page in the welcome page. There are available this symbol here. You can Control C to copy, and you can go in your test bench and you Control V to paste. And this is the component which loads the models, the spice models. Okay, and we are using typical and mismatch because we want to run a mismatch simulation. And also we need to copy, to insert a code block. So we use code, this one, okay, yeah, and we call this uh, stimuli. This is now empty. You can use also Shift Q to bring up your favorite editor to edit these uh, commands. I already have a copy of all the commands needed to run the spice simulation, so I do a copy paste like this. What are we doing here? We set some uh, spice options, integration method. This is always advisable to put in, in your test bench. We set some variation parameters to, for the VCC and as well as the temperature. So in this simulation we are varying temperature, uh, supply voltage and also all the transistor parameters because we are using the TT mismatch corner, process corner. And this is our simulation loop. It uses dot control. I'm not going into all the details of the SPICE control language. You can see all these uh, inputs in uh, the SPICE user manual. Basically, we are looping 100 times. We do 100 different simulations and uh, we write our results. We append the simulation results into our output file, which is in our case TB op amp. Okay. So if 
everything is okay we can close this and also as I mentioned before we need to include this file here so we go here and we need to include stimuli test bench op amp which is generated by the X scheme stimuli generator okay so we are including the resulting file here and I hope everything is correct so we can do a net list and then simulate and we okay so um the last that's the uh, slight abrupt end to that video and the next the final last part is the actual simulation so we'll cover that next um just wanted to cover a few more of these questions uh, live there's an interesting one from sylvan mano hey sylvan um are there any ways of using a scope capture like being able to load a dot csv file and using that as a stimulus oh uh i have never tried that but uh for sure it is something you should do outside of xkeem so you capture some uh, CS csv file for example and you generate uh into some pwl or some other format for uh for um ng spice so i have not done this specific i've done that many times from the different types of scopes of logic analyzers but you know everyone has its own format so it's very difficult to write something that is general to every possible application hmm. but yes this so is it's more of a more of a spice thing converting a csv file into a spice stimulus yeah, I don't know if there are already tools for that, but yes, uh, this okay. is, I have not any specific for that because yeah. if you do one, it is not general enough for general yeah. usage. Okay, great. Okay. Um, uh, question from Eric. What are the options for exporting the schematic for printing? PDF or PostScript? Can things have cross-references or background colors? Yeah, uh, Xkeem has the ability to export uh, in PNG, raster image, or uh, vector SVG image. In both cases, you can do in a light color scheme or dark color scheme. I usually like dark for working uh, on Xkeem, and I like, uh, of course, white uh, color scheme for printing on paper. And of course, there is also PDF and PostScript. PDF is very nice because there is also an option to do a hierarchical export. So you start from the top level of your circuit and it, it will export every page of the sub blocks and they are also cross-linked. So if you click in your PDF on one symbol, you will jump to the implementation, to the schematic of the, of the symbol. So basically we have PDF, SVG and PostScript uh, and uh, PNG. Right. Great. Okay, so we're going to jump to the last uh, section of the video now, which is about five minutes long. So that is going to take us to the top of the hour. So if you do have to, if people here do have to run off to a, another meeting, then uh, we understand this will be recorded and you can catch the last part that you missed. But thanks for uh, joining us anyway. And if you can stay beyond the end of the hour, then we'll have some more time for the rest of the questions. So I'll just uh, share the last video. Okay, we can run a netlist. This dialog box tells we have some undriven signals, but because we have not placed pins for this signal, but we are driving, driving these signals with our test bench here. So we don't care about these warnings and we can run the simulation. It, this will take a minute to complete because we are running 100 different simulations in the meantime i can add a graph a bunch of graphs here two and three and we can also add a waveform loader launcher here so when ng spice completes shortly we can load the waveforms into a scheme. Let's see. Okay, we are done. Load the waves. 
this is actually a toggle so if you click once you load and if you click twice you unload and if you double click in a graph if the waveforms are loaded you see this configuration dialog box anyway if you select by staying close to the inner box of the graph you can click a net press alt g and the net will go into the graph you can click another graph and you if you have a highlight highlight nets here you can do shift k to clear all the highlights you can click the plus signal alt g plus will go into the chart and you can click minus alt g and it will go into the chart as well if you zoom you will see and if, if you if you press f while in the middle of the graph you do a full zoom on the x-axis if you press shift and use the mouse wheel you can zoom on if you without the shift key you can drag the mouse and move the waveforms either horizontally or vertically so anyway this is the input you see only one millivolt offset positive and negative and uh, this is the our output you see the output you can also add the adjust so we click this graph again click the adjust pin alt g and so we are also adding the adjust pin and as you see if you zoom out you you see the output goes the, the output of the differential goes low or high depending on the input and we can also add here let's see the the vcc for example if you set here vcc okay you see also we are also having variations of the vcc so every run has a different vcc needless to say every single if you, you can press it the t key to isolate only a single run so if you and you see the closest waveform for example if you wanted the the lowest one here press the t key you isolate only one single run you see depending on the input the output will uh, move in the same direction so in every single run the amplifier is able to sense one millivolt input this is a very very low signal to to detect to, without doing any um, trimming of the circuit and this is happening with uh, vary, varying temperature and vcc because if you look into inputs we are using a, a variation on the temperature with a gauss cyan distribution centered at 40 degrees with one sigma of 30 degrees centigrade and as well as vcc we are using a one sigma 50 millivolt on top of the average 1.8 uh, volt variation okay so uh, last addition of to this circuit is to add a gain stage since the you see the output swing is not enough to be fully detected by a logic uh, circuit because it's it's still close to the the to the middle point so we want to amplify a little bit and we saw we adding a, a gain block and we will see what happens so this is the gain block i have already created this so we move this label away we put a wire in between since i don't want to see this over strike i will change the lab pin to lab wire just moves the text a little bit above the, the wire so it's nicer what is this main stage again stage is another pseudo inverter here so it takes the input and amplifies to the output and again it also has a calibration stage so during the calibration the output is kept at uh, the maximum gain point so regardless of the input level the output is kept at the maximum uh, trigger point of the invert of this pseudo inverter okay 
Okay, let's see. Another thing you can do in this graph, if you want to change the order, you can put adjust before, so you better see the output diff out over the adjust level. Okay, I have uh, added the game block. I think we can run simulation again. So I will add the out signal and we change the color to yellow, let's say. Okay, it's not available right now because I need to wait for the simulation to complete. And after completing the simulation, we can reload the wave by pressing twi twice this launcher here. Let's save the result in, in the meantime. I think we are almost done. Okay, complete. So by pressing the control key and clicking this launcher, I will unload the, the waves and reload the waves. And if you do, if I do a full zoom, you see now the output is equalized before sensing, then the output goes high when the input is high, the differential input is high and will go low when the differential input is low. And as you see, the swing of this out signal is much better than the diff out signal, okay? And that completes our simulation. We can add, if you click a graph, you can press the C key to copy. You can add another graph. Uh, for example, I want to see E the VCC, the current, the overall current of the circuit. Go here, press F to zoom. And you see the current consumption is between 10 and 30 microamps. So we are within our specs. And this completes the, the simulation of the circuit. You can do many more analysis, operating point, uh, DC, AC analysis, whatever. But this is just an example how to do analog simulation with X-Scheme. This is not a trivial example. This is a, a comparator which with self-calibration able to detect one millivolt and uh, sensing correctly the, the one millivolt input in either, either direction. Thank you. So hopefully that was uh, useful and shed some light on the process and we'll continue taking uh, some Q&A for the next uh, 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, I've also got another poll to run. Um, let's see if I can launch that. That doesn't seem to be working right now. Um, well, it's because maybe I've got that open. Uh, yes, this one, launch. Okay, um, and I also wanted to just um, highlight some things. So uh, we're going to share uh, Stefan's YouTube channel. So that's a great place to follow him and uh, check out some other videos that he's been making. Um, and I'm also going to share some links for some different ways that you can get the tools set up. Harold Prettle, who asked a question earlier, is a professor at JKU University and has an interesting... Uh, Docker setup that has all the tools installed. And also there's been some great work by Proppy making an Anaconda uh, version that installs everything easily. Um, so I'll post some links to those. Um, and while while I'm doing that, we can ask answer some more questions. Um, uh, I'll just read some of these out actually. Awesome webinar. <laughs> so good job, Stefan. And Thank you both. This is a life-changing presentation. <laughs> I think that might be slightly wow. over the top, but thanks very much for um, letting us know that you like it. So um, maybe a question. Here's a good question. Can Python scripting be incorporated as co-simulation? 
Okay, uh, Xkeem, uh, since it is quite an old project because it, it started many years ago as a hobby, it, it was, I think, uh, even before uh, Python was available, or at least nobody knew about Python in, in the, the time. However, uh, Xkeem natively uses uh, TCL as a scripting language and both for the UI and the interface. And there is a whole API because you can basically, everything we have done in this webinar by hand, the drawing circuits, uh, the lines, uh, labels, whatever, can be done by scripting. You can send commands to Xkeem to, to draw a circuit. Moreover, the, the file format of Xkeem's symbols and circuits and schematics is just text. So you can use, for example, Python to, to, to create a schematic from programmatically if you want, because the, the format is very simple. It's just a text file and it is documented. If you go in, this, in the Xkeem manual, you see all the explanation of the file format explained. So you can do either way. You can also send the commands to Xkeem by using TCP. So you can send some commands from your Python script to, to Xkeem, for example, to, to draw something or search a component or do, do an at list, whatever. Xkeem can also be run by command line. So you, if you can, if you want to extract an at list from a circuit, you can just run Xkeem on a circuit, get an at list and quit immediately without even using the, the graphing interface. So many options are possible. However, Xkeme does not use natively Python. It uses TCL, but integration with other languages is definitely possible. Great, thanks. And just looking at this uh, poll now, we see that the probably the top, the next top two um, requested topics are doing the actual analog layout. So that's something that you've already mentioned, Stefan. Um, and then uh, taking that layout and doing a, a tape out on the MPW shuttle run. So that's good to know. And we'll be getting to that in the future webinars. And um, uh, someone asked when the next one will be. I don't know yet, but um, make sure you sign up to the eFabless mailing list to uh, keep fully up to date with when we'll be running the next webinars. And also make sure you join the open source Slack. Um, there's a channel there, especially for X Scheme. So that's a good place to get directly in touch with Stefan to ask questions. Yeah, I try okay. my best to answer. Yeah. Uh, great demo. Thank you, Stefan. Um, I want to do this on my own. Please share. Oh, there's one other thing which a lot of people have asked for is can you share the, um, the, the, the schematics of the demonstration that you've been doing? Well, if you install uh, the Sky130 and Xkeem, Together with the library of symbols, we have used the, the library containing the MOS transistors, the uh, Sky 130 FDPR library. There is also an library, another library containing all the examples, including the one shown here. This comparator I have shown here is the one used in a band gap circuit. So all these examples and many more are uh, available in, in the standard Sky 130 setup. Great. Um, a question from me to everyone else here is, are you seeing uh, in the chat, I've posted three links. Um, maybe we can, uh, people can put their, I don't know, let me know in the q and I'm sorry, I couldn't work out how to enable the chat. It would be good to have that now, but too late. Um, okay, thanks a lot for this great webinar. Thanks for the presentation. Uh, I am doing my project in X Scheme. It's a great tool. Um, here's another question for you, Stefan. What is the waveform viewer? Uh, as you've seen be, before, uh, another uh, field where I was not very happy is about uh, waveform viewers. And there, there are no good waveform viewers, analog waveform viewers. There is a very good one for digital, which is uh, GTK Wave. But for analog, there is no specific tool. Uh, I, uh, so Xkeem has its own, uh, the waveforms you have seen in this presentation are handled directly by Xkeem. So Xkeem is able to read the, a binary SPICE file, the raw file from SPICE and display the results uh, on its own. And uh, the main uh, things I have added are the ability to create a bus from different signals and display many analog signals bundled in a, in a bus uh, and do measurements uh, and stuff like that. 
calculate expressions. For example, you want to, to see the derivative of a waveform or a, a, an integral integration of a waveform of the average or running average or stuff like that. All these things are implemented in Xscheme. And also everything you see in a schematic, including the waves, are saved with the schematic. So if you open again later your schematic, all the list of the waves, the zoom level, the colors are preserved. So you don't have to uh, start over again with an empty waveform window, fill in the waves, uh, set up the zoom level, colors, whatever. This is another thing what's, which is totally missing in any free tool I have seen so far. So yes, I started developing uh, the way from Viewer in Xscheme. Uh, Great. Another question is, can you run multiple spy simulations in parallel? Yes. You have seen in this webinar, uh, we are, I was using different tabs. You, you, so you, have, you can open many tabs, each one with its own schematic, and each tab can run its own simulation. So yes, the answer is yes until your machine uh, allows to do that. <laughs> um, okay, let's see. I think, um, what are the advantages of Xscheme against other open source simulators like LT Spice? Um, but Xscheme isn't a simulator. It, it uses NGSpice or Zeiss to do the simulation. Xscheme yeah. is a schematic capture tool. And yeah, it... I want to make it clear. Yes, Xscheme is a schematic editor. It allows to draw schematics. It mm. is not a simulator. And so it is tightly coupled. It, it's a good level of, of integration with Xyze and Spice, uh, ng Spice. Uh, and it also can, uh, it's not shown here, but I can also generate Verilog and VHDL netlist. I can run uh, with Icarus Verilog uh, simulations with Xscheme or a GHDL, uh, VHDL simulator as well. So mm -hmm. there is a good integration, but Xscheme is a schematic editor. Okay. Um, and we've got uh, Alexander saying, uh, just wants to say thank you, Stefan. Xscheme is part of the tool chain. We're using it this university to teach analog IC design. And if there was no free or open source tools, IC curriculum wouldn't be possible at their university. Um, yeah. Greetings from Banja Luka and looking forward to the next meeting. Thanks, Alexander, for letting Thank us you. know. Um, Another, just a small addition. Uh, most schematic editor tools are for PCB design. You know, there are, are very few tools. One is from Team Edwards. The uh, X Circuit is also good for uh, VHDL, VA, VLSI design. But most of the tools you see, KiCad or uh, whatever, are for PCB design, which is a whole different thing. Um, good. Okay. Uh, another question from Eric. For people just getting started with schematic design in Xscheme, are there introduction tutorials on your YouTube channel? Yes, uh, I recommend uh, just writing a search engine Xscheme manual on SourceForge because I host the website for Xscheme, the manual on SourceForge. So just write XKey manual, you will mm. surely find it. And there are uh, the reference manual tutorials and also video tutorials. Many videos are uploaded there. You can great. look at them. They are not and... so great quality as Matven, but <laughs> they are uh, quite good enough. We're learn. slowly lifting the quality up, aren't we? We got you We yeah. got you that microphone. Next next step will be the camera. Better um, camera, yes. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, is there a document for best practices when doing schematics in X scheme? Like for example, your recommendation to always label nets, is there a document that kind of puts together all the best practices for X scheme? I think not. I, I think I will add this to the manual. I That's think a it's great very suggestion. interesting. Yeah. 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 Thank you. This is a really good, um, yeah, I would very take nice a part of doing a, the, the live event over just watching the, the YouTube videos is that we get this kind of uh, forwards and backwards and we can use the feedback to improve the tools. Um, one question that's been asked a couple of times is, can we include devices with Verilog A, um, like CNT, FETs, RERAM, so forth? Uh, I have just uh, added uh, recent, very recently, uh, one of the tests is the RERAM cell, which in Sky 130 is implemented as a Verilog A model. So basically you can use Verilog A models. However, Xscheme just, in Xscheme, you just place the, 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 the symbol or the component 
and this symbol has a description in Verilog A. So you ju just need to provide the, the, the location of the compiled uh, VHDL, uh, sorry, this, the, this, the compiled Verilog A model to, to the simulation, but this can be done. And this is what I did, for example, for the RERAM cell. There is a T, TB underscore RERAM example in the list of schematics you get when you're installing a Sky 130 with a scheme. And you can look at that for a, for a, for an example, let's say. Okay. Uh, Harold asked, is there a cheat sheet for X scheme keystrokes, but then realized there's a help keys menu. So answered his own question. That's good. Um, uh, and uh, a question from Robin. Hi, Robin. Um, can you spin off the simulations onto a separate computer, such as a, a server or a cloud server? Uh, yes, I. When I was working in the in the company, I was already sometimes using Xkeem for some uh, work. And if you have, uh, I don't know how they are called, this, this computer farm uh, software to to run a job on a different. Uh, a computer or just let the, the the computer farm handle the dispatch of the job mm -hmm. uh, you you just need in, in a scheme there is a, a dialog box it is in simulation configure simulators you just need to prepend to the simulator the 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 the, 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 the command line you use to to submit a job to a different uh, computer so instead of calling directly ng spice you probably need to do B sub or something or NC run or something as just a command to tell, take this job and uh, send it to, to the computer farm. I have done this, so it's possible, but the, the details, the implementation depend on the, on the specific setup. Maybe in the next time I will look at open MP, how it works. So I don't know exactly how this thing works. This is the open source implementation of this, uh, tools to to handle simulation in a server mm -hmm. machine so maybe i can add uh, something on this or even add some documentation about that it's possible okay. but the details are not uh, ready for now right okay so let's um go for our last couple of questions then um one question is can we use digital verilog with analog schematic to do joint mixed signal simulation well, uh, di digital, usually, it depends if you have a mixed signal simulator. This is the first thing you need to answer. Because how do you simulate the digital part and how do you simulate the analog part? You yeah. need to do this with one single simulator because you cannot divide the, the, the simulation in two parts. So send the digital to... For example, Icorus Verilog, for example, and send the analog to ng-spice because these two do not talk, do not talk each other. And uh, the interconnection, the, the scheduling and the synchronization between the, the two tools is, is a vital part of the simulation. So the first answer is how, what are we going to use? One possibility is to describe the digital cells in a very simplified way. Uh, Team Edwards has a lot of input for this. You can use the XSpice uh, subsystem of NGSpice to simulate the, all the digital gates in a very fast uh, way. So you can simulate thousands, thousands of gates without saturating the analog engine of the simulator. So there are many possibilities uh, for this. Okay. Um, and... Um... Ba, ba, bum. Uh, I think this is a this is a the question that we'll end on, and I think this is an interesting question to end on. Um, if you wrote the tool all alone, who will provide the update of the software? Are you thinking of creating a group to maintain the tool? Well, Xkeem is um, has a, a GitHub repository, so it will uh, it will be always available. So if you clone your GitHub and, and compile Xkeem, you get you get the brand uh, latest version. Yeah. So I, I don't know what specifically is the question about. Well, I guess it's about, um, you know, one of the downsides about open source tools is that, you know, they can kind of, um, if the maintainer loses interest, then the project can kind of fall over and it becomes out of use or it gets too old to use or you can't install it anymore. So... Um, 
well, I guess what we need is people who are watching this webinar to get involved on the GitHub and start making pull requests and closing issues and helping out Stefan. Oh yeah, so, because look. yeah, currently there is a problem with the scheme is the the so-called the bus factor of the project. So if right. I get hit by a bus, hit by the bus because you're the will, only one. <laughs> the proper the project will probably slow down a lot. There yeah. are a couple of people we who are committing uh, to X scheme one is the windows maintainer because i don't know almost anything about windows but there is one person doing uh, the the windows version of X scheme which does run on on windows it's not so native uh, as the linux version but it does definitely run so this person has a quite good knowledge of X scheme the internals and there is one other person who contributed some uh, software for example um, displaying images and uh, graphs in the PostScript uh, exporter. So there are some people who are quite in 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 the inside of X scheme. Yes, but I will do. In the meantime, I will do my best to keep X scheme uh, up, updated and uh, available. Also, considering uh, yeah. the evolution of the Linux platforms, the Mac OS or whatever, and avoid any buses. And, avoid and if the you're, yeah, and if you're watching this and you want to get involved, then uh, feel free to get in touch with Stefan via the uh, Slack. Make sure you follow his YouTube channel, and um, I hope to see your designs getting taped out on the forthcoming shuttles, and that you uh, get selected and get some chips of your own in the future. So, with that, uh, let's call this webinar to a close. Thanks very much, everyone, for attending and. Uh, give Stefan a nice round of applause in the quiet of your own living room. Uh, and thanks again, Stefan, for joining us and doing all that work with the video uh, preparations. Thank you, everyone, for your interest and for um, joining here. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.